quick disclaimer before we begin. I'm not really a fan of uh, Warhammer kits. I don't find their kits really well designed. But the guys over on uh, the Squidmore Discord sent me this Sentinel to... They wanted to see my take on it. That's because I usually build mostly historical models and armor kits and stuff. So basically I'm unboxing the kit, ridiculously big um, booklet, base, a decal sheet I won't be using, and the two sprues with like too many parts, too many extra parts. I decide to build on uh, the uh, autocannon version of the kit. Now the Sentinel kit is a pretty old kit and I have to say the sprue gates on, on the kit is ridiculously big and, and they're placed over curved areas which makes it very difficult to like clean them and still maintain the part. Uh, I swear by the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, it has some great um, properties to it, especially that you to reduce a gap between two parts, you can basically just apply the glue and squeeze it as the cement melts the plastic and it will kind of reduce the gap somewhat and sometimes completely. I was thinking really hard about how to translate this uh, very unique vehicle into a historical World War II sense and I don't think the colorful uh, camouflage of German tanks would lend itself to this. So I went for a very simple olive drab as the US Army had on their tanks and their jeeps and stuff like that. It's uh, kind of funny how every Imperial Guardsman look to have the same exact face as the next one. They're all clones, at least in my lore. Now for priming, I prime through an airbrush and I use the uh, Ammo by MIG one-shot primer in grey because it's neutral and it works, it's fine. Um, I use it through my cheap uh, Sparmax airbrush, which I have always been using. As with any uh, visible cockpit uh, kits, uh, it's best to paint them before assembly. And US tanks during war had an ivory uh, interior color. So I chose to replicate that with the Vallejo buff and the AK off-white because I don't have a ivory color, so I just mix them. And then I brush the, the interior parts with that. As for the pilot of the Sentinel, I think the uh, US tanker's uniform of olive drab just gets too olive drabby. So I went for a black uniform as seen on uh, German tankers from the war. Now as I've experienced, it's usually a good idea to check how much is visible off the interior before you go crazy on, uh, on the details. Now the interior details were simply picked out with uh, the AK third generation rubber black, which is sort of like a dark gray, basically. Um, and then um, some uh, red and white as well. Now these are the colors I specifically used. I'll be using them throughout the build as well. Now the rest of the uh, pilot's uniform was highlighted and then the highlight was uh, toned down a little bit with a uh, glaze. And 
then his skin was uh, highlighted and washed and highlighted a little bit more and here you just see my skin tones but this is how we looked at the uh, at the end of it this is just me uh, double checking how it looks before i be weathering the interior and that i'll do with some odorless white spirit and some cheap uh, oil paint this is burnt umber specifically i use a an old brush and i just thin this down into a very thin uh, wash the ivory color of the interior uh, you don't need a strong wash uh, of this so as you can see it just kind of uh, flows easily and it kind of gives like a little bit of detail now you don't have to be careful about this because you can remove uh, later as well like remove uh, some of the wash you don't like now i want a little bit thicker too now that i've defined the detail so i took out some white spirit in there and i added more oil and then i can like really grime it up and make it look really dirty And then where I've done too much, I'll just apply uh, white spirit on the brush and I'll just simply brush away the effect where I think it was too much. Now for my favorite, chipping. I'll be using Vallejo's um, Dark Rust and I'll just be stippling basically with another brush to give it like a more worn appearance. And I'll do this primarily where the crew would have been handling the... Um, the vehicle more and during assembly to avoid the gap at the uh, at the front I'll try to apply glue and then I'll just try to squeeze the gap away until more assembly is needed Now on the auto cannon's uh, site, I think it is, there's a sink mark, which I'm not really fond of. So I'll have to use some Tamiya Putty to, to remove it. Uh, sink marks happen when there's just not enough plastic. So you'll get like a natural sink right there. I decided I didn't want it dots on this side. So I, there was no need to rebuild this. Uh, to mask off the interior, I'll be tucking some spare foam in, and this is from KR Multicase, a wargaming army carrying system. It's the quickest and best way I've found to mask off interior parts. Now it's during priming you find like faults during assembly that you didn't see before, and here the crack in front comes again so I'll be sanding it down more the one shot primer is sandable for a base coat I'll be using Tamiya's NATO black it's a very dark uh, base coat perfect for the olive drab I'm putting on top for the olive drab I'll be using ammo by MIG OD base and OD highlight I'm not a fan of these colors as they wear off ridiculously quick but the shade is nice to make the appearance of the model uh, a little bit more interesting, I'll be using a technique called color modulation, where you basically uh, start with the dark color, the OD base, and then you add the highlights on top, uh, following a shade down. It's sort of like Zenithal, but this is more based on panels. As you can see here, I'm, uh, I'm masking off, and this is basically to, to break up a very monotone color. As you can see, it makes it more interesting to look at. And then I'll do one final layer with some white mixed into the uh, OD highlight. I'll do this very carefully just along the top. It seems very pronounced, but uh, through the weathering, this will be toned down. And through the airbrush, I'll be adding a brown for dark green filter to give it more saturation. It's also important to note that I do add a matte varnish after every single layer here because of the uh, ammo by MIG color wearing off so quickly. Here I'm using Tamiya masking tape to mask off the door and a few other parts and this is to break up the uh, monotonous uh, color even more by adding some 
a desert camo colored parts. Uh, this is seen in the modern US military where uh, woodland vehicles are fitted out with uh, desert painted surplus parts and this is also given the same highlights. At this time I also decided to add the gloss varnish. This is to apply decals to avoid the silvering effect on them. Um, for decals I basically went through my uh, box of decal sheets and I found these with different airplanes, stencils and, I, and lots of stars and US register numbers and stuff. So I basically took what seemed to fit and be appropriate. My decal softening solution of uh, choice is the micro sole. I just add water to decals while they're on the cutting mat and then I just transfer them and soften them with the micro sole. It would probably be a good idea of me to detail paint the model first because now I have to add the gloss, decals, gloss and then matte it and then paint the details. So it's kind of an unnecessary step on my part compared to just painting the details and then adding the gloss, decals, gloss and then weathering effects. But oh well, here I'm going over with uh, matte varnish. And then I'm going to start detail painting. First by adding more highlights by brush on like exposed parts. This is just to break it up even more. And then I use the oily steel color from AK Metallics on the exhaust, the uh, gun barrel and the hydraulic stuff on the feet. Now I wanted to give the exhaust and the barrel the, um, the tinted, heated metal look, so I started with bronze through the airbrush, uh, followed by metal medium mixed with way too much blue, so it wasn't any metal uh, left. Um, so I kind of f***ed up the entire effect to be honest, but I fixed it up with more bronze. And after a strong tone uh, wash, it actually did look uh, quite good. Before adding the last details that needs to be painting, and then adding a gloss varnish to prepare the model for uh, pin washing. Let me introduce you to my good friend, the Tamiya Paneline Accent Color Dark Brown. This is a pretty well used bottle by now, but this stuff is um, it's perfect for uh, pin washing. As you can see it flows really well on the glossy surface and I'm basically applying this to the entire model um, on, uh, in like recessed uh, details. It's not too perfect, I spill a little bit, but the perfect part with this is that you can just go back and fix it um, afterwards. Now for the uh, feet here, I'm just slapping it all over because I want the feet to look dirtier. And as the pin wash is uh, drying, I turn my attention to the base. And I found this cobblestone uh, plastic sheet and I didn't really want to make the entire base cobblestone but I would it would look cool with some so I snipped off two small pieces and just glued them on either side of the base and then I got some uh, texture paint from a K the rheumatic ground from their diorama series and this has been used for quite a long while so it it's really dry and kind of difficult to apply but uh, where there's a will there's a way Now on the plus side it dries really quickly, so the entire build time for this uh, kit was just 3 days. 
And then to clean up the pin wash I use the odorless white spirit again. Well, it's odorless thinner for the label that has worn off. So basically you just use an old brush and you just start removing the pin wash where you don't want the pin wash to be. It, it's magic, it works brilliantly, but like there's nothing more to it. And sometimes I ruined a little bit too much, so I needed to go back and apply more of the wash, but at, in the end it, it, it turns out great. Now as the thinner is drying before I add another layer of varnish, I go to the cobblestone and I paint it black and then neutral grey and then slightly brighter grey and then I pick out a few uh, cobbles in an even brighter one. It looks kind of stark but this will fade down as we keep on working on the base. Now the muddy ground texture gets a dry brush of a beige color to really make it look more earthy. The only thing left to do now is add grass tufts and a little bit of pigments. And then we add more matte varnish after making sure all the thinner has dried. And this is when we go back to our dark rust and we start adding more chips and scratches all over the model. I do the top half with the brush to get more fine details and I do the bottom with uh, some spear uh, foam that I used for masking as well. And this is the quick and easy way to get lots of scratches. And then it's pigment time. I got this ammo by MIG Dark Earth, then I got some really old MIG uh, light dust, light earth something, and then black. I add some pigment randomly on the base to kind of um, break up the uh, even color of it because ground isn't really even colored at all. And then I also add some more up on the legs but not too much of the dark earth one. And then I'll go over with the uh, light dust and I'll add this uh, pretty far up but not much on the top. It is kind of a reversed highlight, you want more in the bottom, less on the top. And then I'll do black on the uh, exhaust and a little bit on the muzzle of the autocannon as well. And then I'll be using some odorless thinner again to uh, clean up the uh, pigments, where I think there was too much of it. Then it's grass tufts time. I'll be adding the last one on camera here. This is grass tufts from uh, Mini Nature. And I'll just add super glue on them and I'll just dab them onto the base where I want it to be. And then I'll give the base a touch up of black before giving the entire model a very light shower of matte varnish and then touching up lenses and controls and screens with a gloss. And then, it's uh, time for the final reveal shot. Now thanks to those who gave me the kit, and they say there's more warmer kits coming as well. Uh, but anyways, thanks to 
Cyril, Marg, Orin, Gas, Bexidor, Snow, Emil, Dennis, Matthias, Squish, Sog, and Mark. You guys are excellent. Thank you.